It's a pleasure to talk to you about this project. I thought it was extraordinary how much of an immersive experience it was for the viewer to feel like they were another soldier in the battle. Was it uh, the intention from the start to make it uh, that immersive and that centered on the human aspect, not the strategy, not the politics at all? I really wanted to try and create, I mean, it, it's what I term a sort of cinema of experience. Mm. You, you really want the audience to go through uh, some degree, you know, some small mm. degree of what people involved in the real events would, would go through. I think that that's what excites me about movies, is about trying to create an experience that is as close to purely cinematic. Mm. Uh, there's so many other media that can tell stories in different ways or address the history of the politics in different ways. What I wanted to do was really try and keep the audience always dialed into the human scale of, of the experience. The sound was so true to life. I grew up in a war situation. I, I, I can still remember those sounds, and I mm. think it was like even another character in the story. So, how much did you work closely with, you know, the, the sound department to make it also part of that immersion? Um, we spent a lot of time uh, developing the sound of, of the film and how it would work, and we tried, mm. particularly with the ordnance, with distant gunfire, things like this. You know, we tried to use real recordings with the real perspectives and not layer things in an overly theatrical or familiar way but try and create a slightly raw gritty feel to the sound um, even though a lot of different layers go into it but, but always have it feel real and tactile and, and threatening. Very tactile indeed and talking about that you know how much of a challenge is it to have so many extras on set so many real things so many props that mm. were actually not props but real life uh, airplanes uh, of course it adds to the reality of the story but mm. what is the challenging aspect? Well, I mean, with this story where you're dealing with land and mm. sea and air separately, uh, there were large challenges with, with each section. I had uh, done films with huge extra counts before, so I had some familiarity with, you know, thousands of extras and that mm. sort of thing. Uh, and I'd done a fair amount of aerial work in other films as well, and so I had some grounding, even though we were pushing it to a different level than we had dealt with before. I had some grounding in that. What I had never done before is marine work, and, and to have such a large marine unit, I mean, one of the largest in film history, I gather, mm. uh, you know, more than 60 boats out on the water at different times. Um, you know, that, that was a huge challenge for me, and I was, uh, I was quite worried about it. But we had a, a very good team in place, and, and I think with a lot of planning uh, and a lot of care and attention, they were able to really maximize what we did. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> Let's talk about Dunkirk as a, as a historical moment in time. Mm. Uh, for you to choose it as your first war film, is it because of the human element and because you didn't really want to do a glory uh, type film? I think for me, I view Dunkirk not even as a war film. I, I mm. view it as a, a suspense thriller. I think that mm. the elements that distinguish Dunkirk as a story, you know, obviously during war, during conflict, but it's this ticking clock, it's this race against time that, that mm. powers it, and it's a defeat. It's the victory within a defeat that I think is fascinating and is the reason that the story resonates. Uh, and finally, is it um, a, a good ratio to use actors that you are comfortable with and have worked with before and then young actors that give like this fresh role feel and kind of echo the inexperience of young soldiers? I really wanted to have soldiers at the heart of this who were the, the right age, not 30-year-olds yeah. playing 19-year-olds. What an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, people in their early 20s. Um, I wanted to confront the audience with the reality of how we fight our wars, which is we send kids to do this. And, and I wanted people to care about these people uh, and, and understand that they were in a terrible situation that no one should really be, be put into, if at all possible, to not do that. Um, sure. The balance of that with more established actors was an ensemble that as a director it's your kind of dream come true is to have these great actors like uh, you know Mark Rylance and Kenneth Branagh working with unknowns watching them learn from each other it was really fun.